Up until now, we've mainly been talking about describing something that has already happened. Well, now we're going to start talking about the probability that something will happen. And over the next, next few sessions, we're going to discuss the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a probability distribution. And there are three frequently occurring probability distributions that the Lind text covers, the binomial, the hypergeometric, and the Poisson. But we're going to focus mo mainly on the standard normal distribution. And I'll show you just as before, I'll pause briefly on the two learning objectives pages. If you want to read the learning objectives, go ahead and pause the video. Now if you're viewing your slides on your own in the slideshow view, you can click on this circle in here, the oval, excuse me, and that'll take you to a video discussing understanding the random variables video. It's a well, well done video, and I encourage you to take a look at that. And so what we see on our screen right now are the outcomes of three fair coin tosses. And with any experiment of chance, the outcomes occur randomly, so we call each outcome a random variable. <clears throat> each value of the random variable is associated with a probability to indicate the chance of that particular outcome. And our diagram illustrates some terms. We are interested in the event that one head occurs in three tosses. So we have three tosses of the die, and we, excuse me, three tosses of the coin, and we want to see when the head occurs. And based on what we have on our screen here, the experiment is that a coin is tossed three times and it leads to the occurrence of one and only one of several possible outcomes. And the outcomes that we possibly can get, there are eight of them. One is that they're all three times are tails. Another outcome is tails, tails, and head. And then the next outcome is that we have tails, the second toss was heads, and the third toss is tails, and so on down the line until all of them are indicating heads. All three tosses are heads. And remember, the event we are looking for is when one head occurs in three tosses. And that's our shaded box that we have here. Because in each of these events, we have excuse me, in each of these outcomes in this uh, box of the, the event, we have a head showing, and only one head showing. So our random variable is the number of heads, and we want to know the probability of the event that the random variable equals one. So if our random variable is the number of heads, and we want to know how many times it equals one, which is ex exactly what our experiment is that we're trying to find out in the experiment, we can find that the probability of one head in three tosses equals three out of the total of eight possibilities, and that's three divided by eight, or 0 0.375. When we list all possible outcomes of an experiment and the probability associated with each outcome, we have a probability distribution, and you can find more about that on page 189 of your Lind text. And you remember back in our previous session when we talked about discrete numbers, those are numbers that have a break in between them, and those would be something that you would show on a bar chart as opposed to a histogram, whereas a histogram is continuous and the values go from one to another in within a range. Well, we also have discrete random variables. And a discrete random variable is a var random variable that can assume only certain clearly separated values. It's usually the result of counting something. And we have that example, a few examples on here. The number of students in a class, the number of children in a home, a uh, family, number of uh, bedrooms in a home. And there usually are counts of things. Well, we have continuous random variables. There's uh, no separation, there's no gap, and these are usually measurements. Think of the pressure, tire pressure in your car. Uh, it could be the fuel volume in your car. So a continuous random variable can assume an infinite number of values within a given range. It's usually the result of some type of measurement is the definition that we see on our screen. If you want, you can click on this link to find a, a vi variable uh, video on random 
variables as well. In this chapter, we're going to just focus on the discrete random variables. And next chapter, we'll focus on the continuous variables a little bit more. So why are we talking about random variables? Well, the reason we need to talk about var and random variables is because we need to understand random variables to understand our probability distributions. And you can find more about that on page 190 of your Lind textbook, in case you're following along in your textbook. In our previous session, we looked through some distributions, and when we Took the we made the uh, dot plots. We took account of different occurrences, and we built the dots by adding the number of times that the particular frequency came up or that value came up. Likewise, we can do that with a probability. So we would list of all of the outcomes of an experiment and the probability associated with each of the outcomes. So the question that comes to mind maybe for you is what's the difference between a random variable and a probability distribution? So a random variable reports the particular outcome of an experiment while a probability distribution reports all possible outcomes as well as the corresponding probability. So it, with the probability distribution it gives the entire range of values that can occur based on an experiment. And it's similar to a relative frequency distribution. And it describes a likely future event. Remember, we said we were going to be talking about what might be coming up or, or the possibilities, the probabilities of what events will be coming up in contrast to a frequency distribution, which describes the past. So let's quickly look at our characteristics of a probability distribution. Number one, the probability of a particular outcome is between 0 and 1 inclusive. Number two, the outcomes are mutually exclusive events. And what does mutually exclusive mean? Well, our book provides the answer. And a probability, uh, the mutual ex exclusive means a property of a set of categories such that a person, object, or measurement is included in only one category. And number three, the list is exhaustive. So the, the sum of the probabilities of the various events is equal to one. And this will become more clear to you as we go on and we start taking a look at the probability distributions. Just as we have discrete and random variables, we have discrete and random probability distributions. Now our textbook covers a lot of different types of probability distributions. In the discrete probability distributions, we look at the binomial, the Poisson, and the hypergeometric. And in the continuous probability distributions, we see the uniform, the normal, and the exponential. And I've provided you this as a reference page, along with some links, if you want to do some further investigation of the different types of discrete probability distributions. In practice, we won't use the discrete probability distributions very frequently. They are available and they do have their uses, so you may want to do some brief reading in your Lind Chapter 6 so that you understand what they are for. But we won't be covering them in this class, just in the interest of time. And just as with the discrete random variable, a discrete probability distribution is a listing of outcomes that assume only certain clearly separated values, usually the result of counting something. Just as with the continuous random variable, the continuous probability distribution is a listing of outcomes that can assume an infinite number of values within a given range. And it's usually the result of some type of measurement. And the next two pages I'm going to go through quickly as well. And these are reference pages of instructions for the Excel and Megastat functions for the three discrete probability distributions here. And and I forgot, I'm also providing you with a reference page with the, the characteristics of the discrete probability distributions all on one page. And here are the Excel functions and how you would calculate out these different discrete probability distributions. And Megastat makes it a little bit simpler and more straightforward. And you'll be happy to know we only have two more slides to go in this chapter. And the first one that we're going to show next is a challenge for you. What are the three characteristics I like to know about any data set that I work with?
you might want to pause the video a second and see if you can remember those. Okay, I'm sure you're back now after remembering them. Let's move on. Well, we want to know the shape of the distribution. So we look at it um, through any of these graphical means, but we also can see that through the skewness and the kurtosis. We want to know the measures of central tendency or the middle of the data. And we also want to know the variability or the dispersion of the data. Now we have on number two the measure of central tendency or the location of the data because if you remember we also worked in percentiles and quartiles and you can find information about the data that way as well. In our next video we're going to go on to our continuous probability distributions but first let's take a momentary break to check the news in the world of statistics. I put this in here just as a kind of a sense of for a little bit of entertainment but the important point here to note is that you when working with statistics it's easy to be sent off track a little bit and after reading this through oh at first glance it looks like it makes a lot of sense but then of course if you read it a second time you'll see that teen pregnancy drops off significantly after age 25 well of course that would be the case because once you hit 20 you're no longer a teen but this was actually in a real uh, article a real paper and it's just a point aside from being funny for you to keep in mind and be alert to when you're reading statistics how easily it is for people to deceive you with statistics whether it's intentional or unintentional